I wish I could make the last eyes he saw ours, his family's, and not their awful murdering eyes. A Reynoldsburg man believed to be the victim of notorious serial killers, a true crime saga that we've covered for decades. For years, his body has never been officially identified or returned home. But a new development could shake up the case and change everything for his family. Investigator Haley Nelson has one family story of pain and hope. Paul was two years ahead of me in school. Our last name was Cosner, and so he was known as Big Cos, and I was Little Cos and then our dog was Cosmo. Paul and Sharon. We just had the perfect life. Brother and sister. We went to the swimming pool all summer, played in the creek. The siblings both graduated from Reynoldsburg High School, Paul class of 1963. After college, this brother and sister duo decided to move out west. He was very happy. When did you notice something wasn't right? Well, I had talked to Paul on the morning of November 2nd, 1984. One of the last times anyone would hear from him, Sharon said he had told his worried girlfriend about selling his car. He thought he had a buyer and she said, who? And he said, that weird guy. That was the beginning of the nightmare. A nightmare that would transform her life. Sharon began hanging flyers, even hiring a PI until a break in the search for her brother. And then they uh, caught two men trying to shoplift in Paul's car in South San Francisco. One man, Charles Ng, got away. Another, Leonard Lake, was taken into custody. That's when Lake did something shocking. He turned and bit his shirt collar and swallowed a cyanide pill with a glass of water and shot up out of the chair and landed on the floor brain dead. What was your reaction? I mean, this man taking a cyanide pill, these people in your brother's stolen car. I thought I had, well, I did, had gone to the dark side. I went down to the, where they had the car and demanded that they let me see it, which they did. And it was, it had bullet holes and blood in the headrest and uh, I knew that Paul was dead. Charles Ng, the other suspect, was eventually found in Canada trying to shoplift, even shooting a security guard. Sharon says it turns out Paul wasn't their only victim. These were likely serial killers. Kidnapped and buried bodies and burnt bodies and cut up bodies. I mean, it was beyond any anything you could imagine. Authorities believing Lake and Ng were responsible for a string of gruesome murders at this Calaveras County ranch, a wooded area well outside San Francisco. They said Leonard Lake had a diary. Paul was the only victim mentioned in it, but it said that they met resistance for first time. And I know they did. Paul's body could never officially be identified. It's a story we've covered for decades. Harry Trombitis joined the FBI in 1983. Now retired, he shared insights into investigations involving serial killers. What is it like to work on a case where you do have someone who may be committing a series of these murders? Back in the 80s and 90s, I think we most likely had more serial killers uh, operating than we currently do. Um, and simply because investigators have linked cases and estimates are there's between maybe 50 to 150 serial murders out there operating throughout the United States. Can you tell us what the jury decided? <sighs> oh, Lordy. It turns out most of the 13 days that the jury was out was spent on Paul. So they gave him guilty on 11 and not on Paul. She believes since the other suspect had killed himself, certain information wasn't shared with the jury judging Charles Ng. It was a blow for Sharon and her mother. She had so many tears running down her cheeks and dropping into her hands that it was a, it was a pond, a puddle of tears that then would just roll down her leg. It was just awful.
Sharon advocated for victims' rights and moved to Granville. We met up with her multiple times. Yeah, yeah, he was very funny. For years, there was no news. Her brother's body never officially identified until finally this summer, some word and even some hope. Paul's remains might be identified. Investigators asking Sharon for a new DNA sample. There's a very good hope and possibility that Paul's in the, um, the bones that they're testing now and that I'll finally get to put him next to mother. Right now, the remains that were located inside the crypt have been sent to the Department of Justice in California to do a forensic um, review. Of Lieutenant Greg material. Stark with Calaveras County tells me scientific advances and the significance of the case leading to this new effort. At this point, we feel that we have a high likelihood that we can find additional victims and or identify the remains that previously could not be identified. How many families could get answers? That's another mystery. We're doing everything we can to help close that chapter of their life and just to let people know that you know justice doesn't sleep. It might be slow, but we need to pursue it at all costs. Back in Granville. Do you come here often? I do. Sharon took us to two special places, like Paul's bench. And I thought, well, I don't know where you are, and I hope you'll be here, so I'm making it here. And here. Boy, it's pretty. Every morning, say hello. The family deciding to have a marker made for Paul, even without his remains. I told them they were trying to find him again, so. I think then, if we find Paul, mm -hmm. then it's over. I can stop, it's over. Years of struggle and pain, but for this sister, this story, her brother's story, her family's story, will end on her terms with hope. I think Paul would have done good things with his life, so I wanted to continue it a little, as much as I could. Charles Ng has been on death row at San Quentin in California since 1999. I did send him a letter in early January requesting comment. The sheriff's office in California is still awaiting results. I'll let you know as soon as there are answers. This all stretching on for this family over 37 years.